Back when I was about 10, my house was the go-to spot for all the neighborhood kids. This was thanks to its endless nooks and crannies just begging to be explored. Our favorite game was hide and seek, a perfect match for the sprawling layout of my old, slightly rundown home. But the basement? That was a different story. It was this vast, shadowy space filled with relics of the past. My grandpa's rusty tools, furniture covered in sheets like silent ghosts, and boxes of forgotten memories stacked in every corner. The basement had this peculiar L shape, making it feel like two separate rooms merged into one. One side was crammed with shelves of old books and vinyl records, a testament to my parents' younger days. The other side, where we rarely ventured, was more of a storage dump with broken appliances and discarded toys. Despite its creepiness, or maybe because of it, the basement held a mysterious allure. Its dim lighting, courtesy of a couple of flickering bulbs, and the constant, musty smell of dampness only added to the intrigue. We'd often dare each other to spend more than a few minutes alone down there, but nobody ever lasted long. One particularly rainy afternoon, when the idea of playing outside was off the table, we decided to brave the basement for an epic round of hide and seek. It was during this game, as I squeezed myself between an old dresser and a pile of musty blankets, that my hand brushed against something unexpected beneath the heavy rug in the far corner. It was a small, almost concealed trap door, cleverly hidden from casual glances. The discovery sent a wave of excitement mixed with a hint of fear through our group. What secrets lay beneath, in the unknown depths under the house? Curiosity got the better of us, and we gathered around the trap door, our hearts racing with excitement and a touch of fear. With a collective effort, we managed to pry it open, revealing a narrow, dark staircase descending into the unknown. The air that rose from the depths was cool and damp, sending shivers down our spines. Armed with only a single flashlight, we dared each other to take the first step. Finally, I took the lead, the wooden steps creaking under my weight as my friends followed closely behind. As we descended, the silence was palpable, save for our whispered breaths and the distant sound of rain above. At the bottom, we found ourselves in a small, cave-like space with walls of dirt and stone. It was empty, save for an old, dust-covered chest in the center. Our excitement peaked as we approached the chest, imagining treasures or ancient artifacts hidden inside. When we opened it, however, we found something far more unsettling. A collection of old, faded photographs and personal belongings as if someone had once lived there, hidden away from the world. The chilling realization hit us hard. We weren't the first to uncover this hidden part of our house. The collection of personal items, so out of place in the dark underground chamber, hinted at stories we couldn't begin to fathom. Fear mixed with an intense curiosity as we scrambled back up the stairs with the trap door thudding shut behind us. We made a pact to keep our discovery a secret, but the weight of what we'd found was heavy on our young minds. In the days that followed, the atmosphere in my house changed. Whispers between my parents, hushed phone calls, and an unusual number of visits from unfamiliar faces suggested they were dealing with the fallout of our find. I overheard mentions of the police and historical societies, but was quickly shushed and sent away whenever I entered the room. The basement became off limits, sealed for what felt like an eternity as experts in various fields came and went, their expressions grave and thoughtful. Eventually, we learned that the space beneath the trap door was part of an old forgotten network of tunnels, possibly used for smuggling during Prohibition or even as part of the Underground Railroad. 
the memory of that day, the weight of history beneath our feet, has stayed with me, a constant reminder of the layers of stories hidden within the walls of our homes, just waiting to be uncovered. Growing up in the 90s was a blast, especially for us kids who seemed to roam a bit wilder and freer than they do today. Summer was the best time of all. No school meant endless days of adventure and play. My parents, like most in our neighborhood, worked full-time jobs. So as soon as the last school bell rang for the year, me and my siblings were on our own until the streetlights came on. Our house, particularly the basement, became the epicenter of our little universe. That basement was like a treasure trove to us. The walls were lined with shelves of board games and books, and in the center, a cluster of mismatched old couches circled around an ancient TV, the kind that hummed with static if you didn't smack it just right. Next to it, our prized possession, a battered Nintendo with a stack of cartridges. Those were our tools for adventure, our escape from the boredom of long, hot summer days. It was more than just a basement, it was a pirate ship, a castle, a space station, depending on the game of the day. One regular summer morning, just like any other, my siblings and I watched as our parents headed off to work, leaving us to our own devices. We made a beeline for our usual hangout spot, the basement. It was our sanctuary, a cool haven from the summer heat. The descent down the stairs that day felt as routine as ever. Our steps quick with anticipation for another day of gaming and makeshift adventures. But the moment we stepped into the basement, everything changed. There, sprawled out on the couch where we'd spent countless hours battling game bosses and arguing over whose turn it was next, lay a man we'd never seen before, sound asleep. A wave of fear washed over us, rooting us to the spot. This was uncharted territory, far removed from the virtual dangers we were used to facing in our video games. Our hearts raced, our minds scrambled for what to do next. In a collective, silent agreement, fueled by fear and the instinct to flee from danger, we turned on our heels and dashed out of the house as fast as our legs could carry us. Without a second thought, we found ourselves pounding on our neighbor's door, desperate for an adult to make sense of the situation. The safety of their living room felt miles away from the uncertainty of our own basement. But by the time we managed to lead a skeptical adult back to our basement, the couch was empty, no sign of the mysterious man. Our story was dismissed as a product of overactive imaginations, a theory we wanted to believe ourselves, yet the seed of doubt had already been planted. Just a few days had passed since the first unsettling encounter, and the incident had slowly begun to fade from our immediate thoughts, dismissed by the adults as nothing more than the wild imaginings of children left too long to their own devices. We had almost convinced ourselves that it was indeed just our imagination. But then, it happened again. This time we were more determined, our previous fear now mingled with a resolve not to be dismissed or doubted. Without hesitation, we bolted from the house, our hearts pounding with a mix of fear and urgency, and made a beeline for our friend's place nearby. We knew we needed help, and fast. Once there, we wasted no time in explaining the situation, our words tumbling out in a frantic rush. Our friend's parents quickly grasped the seriousness of our claim and didn't hesitate to act. The police were called, and within what felt like an eternity but was likely only a few minutes, they arrived, their presence a reassuring sight. The officers followed us back to our house, their steps purposeful and confident. We led them to the basement, the scene of our fear, and there he was, just as we had said. A man still asleep on the couch, oblivious to the turmoil his presence had caused. The police moved quickly then, 
waking the man and taking him into custody without incident. Relief washed over us as we watched the stranger being led away, the immediate threat removed. It was years later when I finally learned the whole truth about the man we found in our basement that summer. It was during one of those rare, quiet moments when you're just chatting about the past and the topic of those strange summer days came up. My dad, with a more serious tone than I was used to, shared what he had learned about the man after the incident. He told me that the man was indeed homeless, someone who had been drifting through our town without a place to call home. But what chilled me to the bone was learning that he had a history of run-ins with the law, some of which involved offenses that were every parent's nightmare. My dad didn't go into much detail, but the implication was clear. The man wasn't just a harmless drifter. He could have been a real danger, especially to kids like us who were home alone most of the day. Hearing this as an adult, I felt a wave of relief wash over me mixed with a shiver at what might have been. It was a stark reminder of how things could have taken a very different turn on those seemingly carefree summer days. It made me see those memories in a new light, with a newfound gratitude for the way things turned out, and a sobering realization of the risks we had unknowingly faced. My parents' house always had a funny smell. No matter how many candles they lit or windows they opened, it lingered. A mix of old wood, dampness, and something like stale cheese. Maybe that's why I loathed going into the basement. It wasn't fear exactly, more like a deep, skin-crawling aversion. The house was ancient. The sort with a dirt floor crawl space you accessed through a trapdoor beneath the kitchen pantry. That led to the actual basement. Cinder block walls, unfinished ceiling where you could see the floor joist from the kitchen above and one bare bulb dangling from a wire. There was nowhere to hide down there. Any noise in its source was immediately visible. It was a terrible place to play. Then there was the furnace. This hulking monster, easily twice my height at age seven, was like a growling beast tucked in the back corner. At random times, it would roar to life in a great explosion of fire and hot metal sounds. The whole basement vibrated when it kicked on. Sometimes I'd be lucky and already be halfway up the stairs when it ignited, but there were other times. That's the day it happened. We were having a power outage in the dead of winter Mom sent me down with a box of candles and told me not to light any yet. Just look and see if the fuse box is tripped, okay, sweetie? Her voice drifted faintly down the dark stairwell. That weird smell was stronger than ever in the blackness. Each step creaked under my weight. My hand fumbled to turn on the light just as the furnace thundered to life. There was a flicker of movement by the stairs. A shape detaching from the shadows. Pulling the string of the light bulb, I realized again that the power was out. The basement was in total darkness. Terror made my breath freeze in my lungs. It wasn't a person's shape, I was sure of it. Not human, not tall enough. Something crouched on the stairs, the light from the roaring furnace catching what looked like wet, oily fur. Like a huge, drenched rat, its head twisted towards me, a flash of teeth far too long to be any earthly animal. Then the power clicked back on. Not just the bulb overhead, but the whole house. That thing was gone, just gone. I sprinted up the stairs, heart hammering. I told my mom it was a giant rat, a lie even I didn't believe. Later, safe in bed with every light in the house turned on, I could still feel it watching me, waiting under the pantry, waiting for the next time the lights went out. I never asked to go down to that basement again. 
Living in the city, our family was squeezed into a small apartment that barely had enough room for all of us. The constant hum of traffic and the bright lights from billboards were our daily scenery. Our kids had to make do with playing in cramped concrete spaces, their laughter often drowned out by the noise of the city. We longed for a quieter, more peaceful life. The apartment felt more like a box, with its tiny rooms and the sounds of neighbors always close by. It wasn't just the lack of space or the noise the city was changing, too. We'd hear stories of crime creeping closer to our neighborhood, making us anxious. One time, a break in a few floors down had the whole building on edge for weeks. We were city folks through and through, but even we started to dream of a life with a bit more room to breathe and less noise. So when we got the chance to move to a suburb, it felt like a dream. We were excited but also a bit naive about what life outside the city would be like. The house we found was like something out of a storybook, with its white picket fence, a sprawling backyard perfect for summer barbecues, and more rooms than we knew what to do with. But it was the basement that really piqued our curiosity a vast, shadowy space that promised endless adventures for the kids and ample storage for us. Its cool, musty air and dimly lit corners hinted at secrets waiting to be uncovered, a stark contrast to the airy openness of the rest of the house. In the beginning, it was only our kids who noticed the strange noises. They'd come running up from the basement, their faces filled with worry, telling us about the eerie scratching and clawing sounds coming from the walls. We'd go down to check, but every time we did, the noises would stop. This made us think maybe the kids were just letting their imaginations run wild, especially since everything was still so new to us after moving from the city to this quiet suburban place. Days passed, and the kids kept talking about the noises. We reassured them, chalked it up to the house settling, or maybe the wind. But then, one quiet evening, I heard it too. A soft yet unmistakable scratching sound, like desperate fingers trying to escape the walls. I called my wife skeptical at first, but then her face changed as the scratching resumed, louder this time, undeniable. Panic set in. We considered every possibility. Ghosts, spirits, some unknown entity trapped within our walls. The fear was palpable, hanging over our family like a dark cloud. We lay awake at night, listening to the haunting sounds, wondering what lurked behind the plaster. Then, during a small gathering, one of our new neighbors paused mid-conversation, a knowing look crossing their face as the scratching echoed faintly from the basement. They laughed, explaining it was just mice in the walls, a common suburban nuisance we city folks had never considered. Relief washed over us as we called an exterminator, who confirmed our neighbor's diagnosis and took care of the unwelcome guests. Slowly, our life returned to normal, the eerie sounds replaced by the comforting silence of our new suburban home. But we'd never forget our first encounter with the mundane, yet terrifying, realities of suburban living. The floorboards above me groaned. It wasn't a new sound in this old farmhouse, but something about it tonight sent a prickle down my spine. I paused, fingers resting on the keyboard. This wasn't the usual settling noises more rhythmic, like dragging footsteps. Probably squirrels in the attic again, even though the exterminator swore we dealt with them last month. With a shrug, I went back to work. Freelance coding doesn't offer much excitement, so my basement office was intentionally isolated. No windows, a heavy old door that blocked out most household noise. I'd grown comfortable with the quiet down here, broken only by the hum of my desktop and the clicking of keys. 
except today, those familiar sounds seemed less steady. Sometimes the keys didn't register, sometimes a double click echoed oddly. I frowned and restarted the computer, attributing it to age. No point investing in new tech when work is slow. Outside, rain tapped against the basement's single, ground-level window. Just above my monitor, it offered a dim view of the overgrown backyard. There was a shift in the shadows. It could have been just the way the rain fell, but it almost looked like movement in the old tool shed out back. I rubbed my eyes. Staring at screens all day did that. Or was it something else? A low-grade fear I used to feel as a kid, back when every half-seen shape looked monstrous. I shook my head and returned to the spreadsheet. Deadline day had no time for childish fear. It got worse as night fell. Not the noises, those settled back into the usual groans of the house. Light was the issue. The single overhead bulb started flickering erratically, turning my screens into strobing bursts of color. The effect made my stomach twist. Finally, in a flicker of frustration, I abandoned the desk entirely. This was beyond bad timing. I'd need to fix the wiring somehow, first thing tomorrow. Then the power wavered, dying for a full heartbeat before surging back up and bathing the room in harsh light. For a split second, my heart stopped. A figure stood frozen in the doorway, tall and hunched. Rain dripped from a ragged coat to puddle on the old linoleum. Not quite human in posture or proportions more. Lumpy. And it was absolutely staring at me. It vanished a moment later, but that didn't make my body believe it. Who's there? My voice sounded thin and cracked. Nobody answered. Just a faint rustling outside the basement window. Whatever it was, it hadn't left. It had moved. Panic surged, making my legs shake. I wasn't a kid anymore, not powerless. My phone was upstairs, too risky to go up, but in this room. The tool rack sat beside the desk. An old hammer was still good for swinging, even if it couldn't fix wiring. My trembling hand closed around the wood-worn handle. It felt less like a weapon and more like a child's security blanket. But facing the doorway, facing that rustling at the window, it was all I had. One deep breath for courage. If something came lurching in, I'd fight. At least that was what I told myself, over and over, as the old farmhouse seemed to hold its breath in the rain. But that lurching moment never came. For an eternity that might have been minutes, I stood frozen, hammer clutched in sweaty hands. There was the whisper of rain from outside, the creak of the house responding, but nothing else. Slowly, ever so cautiously, I dared to inch closer to the window. Heart pounding against my ribs, I peered through the rain-streaked glass at the old shed. Empty. That shape, whatever it was, had disappeared into the night. I slumped back against the workbench, relief a wave that almost buckled my knees. I never found out what was lurking in the shadows that night. Whether it was an animal, a trick of the failing light or something inexplicable. There was nothing to prove it existed. It haunts me still, though. It reminds me how quickly even the familiar can turn unnerving if you let your senses play tricks. My basement office never quite regained its sense of safety. Sometimes, even now, a flickering light or a sound outside a window makes my palms go clammy and my thoughts run back to that rainy night. And on dark, damp days like today, I still check the hammer is there, right where I left it. We've been in this house since Sarah and Alex were just toddlers, and that basement has been their favorite spot for as long as any of us can remember. It's an old, somewhat musty place, but to them, it was a castle, a pirate ship, or a secret hideout, depending on the day. 
One afternoon, after a long day of what I assumed was just their usual games, they came racing up the stairs, out of breath and wide-eyed. They were all worked up about some whispers they heard down there and footprints in the dust that they swore weren't theirs. To them, it was clear as day. They had an invisible friend joining in on their adventures. Despite our doubts, we couldn't help but be drawn into Sarah and Alex's mysterious tale. So together as a family, we made our way down to the basement to see these mysterious signs for ourselves. The kids pointed out the footprints in the dust, which, upon closer inspection, did seem oddly familiar, almost like we'd seen them before but couldn't quite place where or when. The whispers were a different story. We strained our ears, and there it was. A soft, murmuring sound, barely there, but unmistakable once you noticed it. It was strange and a bit unsettling, floating through the quiet of the basement with no clear source. As weeks passed, the whispers and footprints in the basement became a bigger part of our family's life. The kids refused to go down there anymore, convinced it was haunted. Even we, the parents, started to feel uneasy. The idea of ghosts, which we'd laugh off during the day, seemed all too real during the silent, uneasy nights. We found ourselves whispering about it after the kids had gone to bed, half joking about moving to escape our haunted house. It all came to a head when we had to fix a leak in the basement. As our fears kept us from venturing into the basement, we noticed the mysterious footprints gradually vanished. The absence of our presence in the basement meant no new footprints were formed, leading to a curious observation. One day, braving a visit to the basement together, we noticed the kids, barefoot, shuffling their feet across the dusty floor. The movement of their feet, dragging across the dust, created elongated, distorted shapes eerily similar to the footprints we had been puzzled by. This simple act, seen in the right light, solved the mystery of the ghostly footprints, turning our apprehensions into a moment of laughter and relief. That's when we found the old, rusty pipe hidden away behind a wall. Turns out it was this pipe that had been carrying and distorting noises from outside into those eerie whispers we'd been hearing. The relief was immediate, and life in our home slowly returned to normal, the basement no longer a place of fear, but just another part of our family's story. Once we figured out the truth about the whispers and the footprints, the basement didn't seem so scary anymore. It was just a normal part of our house again, but we all remember the time when we thought it was haunted. We still talk about it sometimes, laughing about how we let our imaginations run wild. It's a story we'll probably keep telling for years, a reminder of how a little bit of imagination and a few strange noises turned our basement into a mystery. <laughs>